Hello, I'm Eric Torres. I'm an instructor here at CAN-TV. And today's topic is cameras and pedestals. We're going to talk about how to properly use these and set them up safely. So let's get started. So there are times when um, you need to power the camera up or power it down. But in general, the staff will take care of that. So you don't have to worry about it as a producer. However, there are those instances when you're having trouble controlling the iris of the camera, for example, it is OK to power the camera off and back on again. It's also good to know how to turn the camera off and on. So it's a little switch, a little silver switch on the front bottom of the camera right there and you can power it off by pulling the switch back towards the back of the camera, powering it on, you're pu pushing the switch away from you toward the front of the camera. That's all there is to it. So you shouldn't have to worry too much about powering off or powering on. But if you do have to, that's how you do it. And all the lights will come on when you turn the switch. When you first approach the camera, there are important things to do to enable you to use it and things like unlocking the wheels, unlocking the pedestal if, if necessary, unlocking the, the pan and the tilt. In order to use it you don't want to force anything so it's important to know how to properly lock and unlock those things. So let's take a look at that. So there are important controls to learn here. We got brakes, we got locks, Typically, you're going to see this down like this when you go to move it out from the wall. Um, ergonomically, you don't want to just like have to bend over and move it around, so you're going to want to pull it up. So there are locks under there that should not be locked when you get here for your show. The, the crew before you should not have locked it. That's the policy, is never lock these in the down position at the end of a show. Um, so that the next people coming in, it's easy to just pick this up and pedestal this up without any resistance. So there's a lock here that you should never lock when it's down. When it's up in the air and you want to keep the camera stable, fine, you're going you're gonna to lock it. Um, and that way it's not going to go floating around up and down. But when you put it to store, no. You're going to pull it to the right in the opposite direction of the way that you lock it using the palm of your hand, you're going to like safely use the palm of your hand to make it safe because otherwise if you're going to strain, you're going to hurt yourself. So that's your pedestal lock. Now you also don't want to start moving this around if the wheels are locked. You don't want to turn this if the wheels are locked because you can damage the, the equipment. So you've got your wheel locks down there. You want to make sure they're popped up. You step on it to either lock it, which is the low position, or unlock it, which is the upper position. Make sure all three wheels are unlocked before you start trying to steer this. And you want to steer it by pointing the wheels all in the same direction. Now these pedestals, they're kind of organic. They're, it's, it's like it's almost alive. So sometimes a wheel has a mind of its own. And it likes to move and float somewhere. If that's the case, you just give it a little kick and it'll align it with the other ones. So your wheels should be free to turn, it should not be locked, and also you usually want all three wheels to move in unison so that you can steer one direction or steer another direction. And so you want to make sure you're in the proper mode. And so the three wheel mode is another red button, it's more in the center of the equipment here, that you're going to push and let go if you intend to take it out of the three wheel mode. And then you're going to start turning the wheel until only one wheel is turning, the others are not. Then you know you're in the one wheel mode, which is useful if you just need to rotate the entire pedestal for some reason. But in general, for most people's uses, you want all three wheels to be able to move together. So this is really important, to put it from the one wheel mode back into the three wheel mode, there is a special thing you have to do 
If you don't do it, you're probably going to damage this thing, and it's extremely expensive to repair. So what you do is you hold down that same 1-3 button. You hold it down. Don't let go. Then you start turning your wheels. You turn your steering wheel until you feel a click and you see all three wheels are moving together. Then and only then can you lift up your leg and let go of that button. It's very important. So that's the beginnings of using the pedestal. So in order to properly frame up a shot, you're going to need to pan and tilt your camera. And so don't just grab the handles and start making your moves because they might be locked, those two things. Check to see that your tilt lock is loose and your pan lock is loose. It's just like a bottle cap, you know, lefty loosey, righty tighty, you know, counterclockwise to loosen, clockwise to tighten. So loosen them up and then you should be able to freely pan and freely tilt. Now these kind of movements are best done with the column locked because if the column's not locked, this is what happens. I'm going to unlock the column and start, see, look what happens when I tilt. The whole pedestal is floating up and down. Or if I'm panning, another thing that could happen if your wheels are unlocked, you could be panning and whoops, the whole camera starts slipping around. So two good things to do when you're in position, when you're ready to take a certain shot, a certain angle, is to lock at least one wheel. You don't have to lock all three. We're not in San Francisco here. So lock at least one wheel, lock your column. Once you've determined the height that you want your camera, lock your column. And then all of your pans and your tilts should be pretty smooth without the camera floating around. However, there's one more thing to consider and that's the tension. So you have tension controls for both of those. You have on the left side here a tilt drag. It's called drag. You turn it one way to loosen and the other to tighten. I'm also going to turn on the indicator on the back. I'm going to hit power on here, which will show us our different tensions. So as we change that tension, the number changes. So the higher number, higher tension. It goes from 0 to 100. So 100 is a lot of tension. So for tilting, that's going to make a really smooth tilt when you're trying to do a tilt from something that's from one distance to another that might be uh, stationary. You want it to be nice and smooth. Now, if you want to tilt faster, then you're going to want a lower tension. So you dial it the other way. If the light goes out, just push power again. Dial it the other way until your number's really low, and then you're going to have a lot less tension. So I'm going to give it, you have to experiment. I'm going to give it below 50. I'm going to try that. And so already my tension is much looser, so I can tilt faster. That's good for like a dance show or something you're trying to follow the action. Now on the other side of the camera, you have two different knobs here. The bottom one has to do with pan tension. It's called a pan drag. And so the same as the other knob, you turn it one way or the other to change that tension. The other knob above it, the big one, is called counterbalance. This is set by the engineering staff. We don't want you to change this. That will balance the camera properly on the pedestal. So use both of those controls until you customize the tension and that way you can get the kind of movements that you want to get. Now when you tilt or pan, typically you ease into it. So if I'm going to tilt down, I start slow and then I can speed up if, I, if that's my intention, if I want a fast tilt. And then you ease out of it. You slow down at the end of the tilt. So slow, fast, and then slow again. Same for panning. 
slow start and then faster and then ease out of it. So you don't want to be like a robot. You don't just want to go, eh, eh. you know, that just looks mechanical. You want to ease in and ease out. So it is something of an art form. So it's something worth practicing. Okay, so once you're situated with your camera where you're intending to shoot, you're going to be needing to focus and zoom. And so you have your zoom control over here, which is pressure sensitive. And so the harder you push it, the faster your zoom, to zoom in or to zoom out. Your focus pulls over here, it's turning the knob. And you also have some focus assist features on your screen that we can talk about. It's a good thing to learn how to master your zoom rocker so that you can get smooth zooms. However, you're also using it for just for purely technical reasons and not artistic reasons at the beginning of the show before you start recording. You want to make sure that this person that you are, uh, that, you're, that you're framing is properly focused. And so you're doing something called pre-focusing, where you zoom in all the way to a person's eyes, all the way to their eyes. And then you focus on their eyes, not on their nose or their ears or their glasses. You're going to focus on their eyes, because the eyes are the most important part of that person. If the eyes are blurry, it's not looking good. So the eyes need to be sharp. So use your focus assist features to make sure that it's sharp. You might, you might think it's sharp, but it might be just a little off. It's sometimes hard to tell on these little screens. So use your focus assist. Make sure it's in focus. You can leave the focus assist on if you want to. It doesn't hurt anything. The system is not recording any of those indicators. It's not recording the zebra lines or the red uh, peaking indicator. It's simply a diagnostic tool for you on your screen. So once you're sure that it's in focus, you can then zoom back out to the shot that the director wants you to get. They may want a medium close-up or a wide shot. And then you're ready in case you need to zoom in. You know it's going to be in focus. When you approach your camera, you're going to, at some point, need to speak to the rest of your crew. So you're going to want to grab your headphones, and this is where they live. They usually are placed here. There's a sticker letting you know that. Headset hangs here. And that's important, because if you hang it somewhere else, like down here, it could get caught. You could forget it's there. You could be turning this wheel. This could, the cable or something could get caught in something and it will damage it. So don't hang it here. Don't hang it up here. Those are all bad. Always hang it on the right side of the camera where it tells you to. So when you need to speak to your crew, take your headphones. On the other side of the camera, the left side of the camera, there are some controls for controlling the volume. So Put your headphones on, adjust, if necessary, adjust the angle of your microphone so that it's not touching your mouth and not right in front of your mouth. It's good if it's a little below your mouth because if it's right in front of your mouth, you're going to be getting breath sounds on that microphone and people are not going to enjoy that. So just a little bit below, then you can adjust your volume. Um, your volume control is right here. It's a little black knob it's called level. You're going to turn it down or up as necessary. Now, if you need to speak to somebody, there is a little switch right up to the right of that and a little up above. Turn it up, push it up, and your microphone gets activated. You're able to speak to other people. However, during the show, it's best to keep it off. We don't need to hear a lot of chatter in the control room. Yeah, you know, and then I, I told her to just mind her own damn business, and, you know, I just wish she would just listen to what I'm saying every once in a while. You know, that would be nice if she could just listen to me, you know? 
that that would really be great if if she would just listen. Cut the chatter, Rogue One. So push it down to turn it off. There are actually two ways to do that. There's another knob next to the zoom rocker that activates your microphone. It says VTR. If you push that, it activates your microphone. VTR used to activate a video tape recorder, but it's not being used for that anymore. The circuit is being used now for your microphone. So that's another convenient way. This is a better way, I think, because you can get visual confirmation at the little green light. You can see that you have turned your microphone on or that your microphone is off. And then adjust your level as needed. All right, so when the shoot is over, it's a nice thing to do to put these cameras out of the way for the next crew that's coming in. It's not an absolute necessity, but it's a good practice. So if the staff is too busy, you can give them a hand. <clears throat> so start wheeling your camera in. When you start to get close, you might want to start wrangling your cable. The proper way to wrangle the cable is to take a section of it about two or three feet long with your hand facing your body. You're going to turn it towards you to make a loop. The second move, your hand is actually facing away from you. So it's going to be on the inside part of the cable. The part of the cable is closer to you. You're going to turn it in like this. You're turning it in so that that cable is still falling the same way over here. It's always going like that. It's always going clockwise. And you're going to lay it down there. And so then you go back to that first move. And this, again, your hand is on the outside, the part of far, farthest from you. You're taking that. You're going away from yourself. And then you're coming back towards yourself. It's like a wave com coming down on top of you in, in the ocean. It's just always kind of coming from above, coming down towards you. The reason we alternate between this move and this move is because it comes off easier when you go to use the cable. It also gives the cable more life. It lasts longer. It's less tension on the cable. So you do the alternating wind until your cable is just taken up, and then you can start to move your camera in. So you alternate those two moves back and forth, back and forth. Do the best you can. If you're not perfect, that's OK. The staff usually does this anyhow, like I was saying. So then you can bring your camera in and park it there. And you don't want to lock anything um, that has to do with the actual column. So you unlock your column so it's free to go up and down. OK, turn your camera around which obviously means you need to make sure your pan lock is loose. So have it so the camera's facing out. Try to position it close to where the cable is on the wall. Don't have any wheels locked. Everything down here should be unlocked. And then push it down. And maybe the one thing you might want to have locked is your tilt lock so the camera doesn't like fall down or anything. Just that one thing, perhaps. And that's it. Everything else is loose. No wheel locks, no column lock, camera facing out, down. You're fine. You don't even have to turn the camera off. The staff can handle that also. So as you can see, this is a complicated piece of equipment with a lot of controls on it. And it's important to learn how to properly use it so that you don't get injured and so the equipment stays safe as well. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, catch us on our next video.